Are you wondering what cooler would be best to pair with your new AMD 5000 series CPU? Do you even need water cooling from an AIO that's an all-in-one? Or can you go air cooling and how much do you really have to spend? I'm going to answer those questions with you in this short video. Before we jump into that though, I have one small favor to ask. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you. A quick note before the main topic, I want to point out that before you go ahead and purchase any cooler, just make sure that it is compatible with your CPU socket. For us with the 5000 series CPUs, we need to check that our cooler is compatible with AM4 sockets. For air coolers specifically, you may also need to check for RAM clearance. If that's all good, let's have the battle won. Now the first thing I want to tackle is whether or not you need to get water cooling and the answer is no you don't. The Ryzen CPUs have a TDP or heat output of 105 watts which is easily handled by the majority of air coolers even the cheap ones like the very popular Cooler Master 212. Easy peasy video over right? Not quite, you can get great performance from an air cooler, but I still recommend that you go for an all-in-one and there is a number of reasons for that. Starting with performance, there are some air coolers, namely the Noctua NHU-12A and Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro that are absolute beasts and very competitive here. But in general, an all-in-one is going to be better. Even if you're not overclocking, the better performance from an all-in-one has a number of benefits. One, it will be quieter. Due to the increased surface area and fan counts, less RPM is needed to keep temperatures under control and in turn that makes less noise. 2. You have more consistent performance under load or in a hot room because typically all-in-ones have a higher heat threshold, they can keep cool in scenarios where some air coolers would crap out. Thirdly, appearance. Now I know this might not be important to some of you watching, but let's be honest, PC aesthetics are a legitimate thing that people take into consideration when purchasing. And finally, overclocking. Because of that extra headroom all-in-ones provide, if you're going to be overclocking, it is almost a requirement you go with some form of water cooling. So which all-in-ones do I recommend? Well, in general, I wouldn't recommend a 120 millimeter radiator all-in-one because the performance is not really all there. Unless you're going for a small form factor and have no clearance for a decent air cooler, I wouldn't go for one of these. 240mm or dual fan AIOs provide an excellent balance between performance and price. And this is where I would recommend for anyone not looking for the most extreme of daddy overclocks to be buying. Some of the best in class coolers here include the NZXT Kraken, the Corsair H100 and the ASUS Ryujin. And for the big boy overclockers, 360mm or triple fan AIOs all the way the best performance at the highest price. There is no real need to go this big besides overclocking. All of the features these coolers have can be found on the smaller 240 millimeter AIOs, but for some people, and this does include me, it's go big or go home. I will leave affiliate links for all the above recommendations in the description below. If you have made it this far, be sure to give the videos a thumbs up and if you're feeling really good, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I will do my best to reply quickly. And if you're still thirsty for some knowledge, check out one of the two videos shown on screen now. And until the next one, peace.